everybody, did you know that we have another YouTube channel? It's called the Big O Family Music Channel. It's where we post a whole variety of folk music, classical music, country music, and a whole variety of worship music. We need to make it up to a thousand subscribers, but we need your help. So you can head on over there and subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to click the bell button. The link is in the description box below. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks a, a bunch! bunch. So this is part two of how to tan a bison hide. I'm starting on my bison hide here, where Julia had left off on her bison hide. First of all, when we got it, I fleshed it, put it on the frame, salted it, and um, washed the salt off. I'd left it in one of our lean-tos, and it was misty this morning. I went in to check it, and the moisture content was just right. So I decided to um, go on with the tanning process, which I'm going to show you how to do right now. You stretch the fibers open with the tool that I have here. You want a blunt edge and you press it against the hide and the fibers open up and stretch. Then you put the brains on when the moisture content is right. It soaks in and lubricates the fibers and that's what makes your brain tan. So these blue spots along the edge of the hide here, those are the fibers that aren't opened up to the extent that you would like them to be. So I'm gonna press on them and you're gonna see it get white. Nice and loose now. So it is about quarter after nine um, right now, and I'm going to spread my mixture of brains, egg yolks, and baby oil on the hide and I've loosened up all the fibers so it's gonna soak up really well. Rub it in really well to get and lubricate all the fibers and then I'm gonna cover it with plastic bags for the night and tan it tomorrow morning. about halfway done rubbing the tanning solution into the hide and I made sure that when I put it on the hide that it was warm. You want to make sure it's warm so that the hide absorbs it better and it soaks into the fibers better than if it was cold. Okay so this is um, the finished hide with the brains on it. I'm going to let this sit overnight and hopefully it will be a nice day in the morning then I'll be able to continue softening it. But for now, um, the brains are going to sit on the hide for tonight. I'm going to cover it with some plastic bags. I'm going to cut those up. Then I'm going to lay them on the hide so that there's no surface, if possible, showing that could dry up during the night. And it is ready for the night. And in the morning I will take these off scrape the remaining um, brains that didn't soak in, scrape those off, put it in the pot, and then start softening. And then you'll see the steps from there. Okay, so this morning it was sunny, and then it got rainy. Brought it into the shop before it started raining, took the plastic bags off, scraped the remainder of the tanning solution off of the hide, um, put it in a bowl so I could use it later, and now I am going to wait until it starts to clear up a bit and wait till the wind has got at it, started to dry the fibers better, and then it will be ready for stretching. But until then, I'm going to have to wait. So I took all the brains off. It's getting a nice consistency now. It's not quite so wet. So the wind will help dry that as well. Okay, so just took it down again. Stopped raining. And I am going to go on this with my bare feet and I'm going to open up the fibers. I'm not going to do it with my tool that you saw yesterday because that can take more of the brains out instead of pushing them into the fiber, which my feet are going to do. The fibers will be far more opened up when I'm done and 
I'll show you a video of it draped down like this and hopefully you'll be able to see how much it uh, the fibers open up. So I just stepped on it for about five minutes. It definitely stretches. I've actually been touching the ground. I don't really want but as you can see it's far closer to the ground than it was before. The fibers are definitely opening opening up. And now I'm gonna work it with the blunt end of this broom here, right here. And then continue working that, pushing the brains in and uh, see how it starts to dry. So it stopped raining and now the sun is out and the wind is blowing. The perfect type of weather you want for tanning and softening uh, Weisenheim. So what I'm going to do now is go over and open up all the pores, stretch it, soften it, get everything loosened up. Then I'm going to reapply the brains that I took off this morning that I scraped off. I'm going to reapply those with some extra water so it soaks into the pores and then I don't need to do the whole tanning process over again. I'm just going to piggyback that on right today as I continue softening it. So I'm going to bring you along and show you what I do. Okay, so I'm going to apply the second application of brains today onto the hide. I got my mixture of brains and water. It's um, very watery right now because the hide is quite dry. I would say it's probably about half dry. It's always very deceiving when you're tanning and you always think you're just about done, but it's usually half done drying instead of three quarters. So make sure it's very watery so it soaks into the hide and the fibers better and I'm going to go around and find the places that seem to need more oil and I'm going to rub those in. Okay, so this is going to be my third application of brains, and I filled the pot up right with water and put the last of my brains, oil and egg yolks in here and blended it with the stick blender. So it's really nice and thin, and hopefully it will soak into the hide really well by tomorrow morning. Just heating it up right now so that it'll um, soak into the hide fibers better. It is the evening out, the sun is setting, and I'm going to put the third solution on of water and brains. I made this especially thin because the hide is drier at this point than what you usually put the brains on for. So I'm going to smear it all around and then step on it with my feet to press those brains and oils into the fibers to lubricate them. Okay, so I finished spreading the brain solution all over the hide and I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera but it's quite a few places are blue so that means it's soaked all the way through and I'm going to step on it with my feet so basically just rub it into the hide get it all into the fibers this works really well instead of bending down and rubbing it in with your hands that can get your back pretty sore if you do it for a while then I covered it with plastic bags and it will wait here in the shop till the morning I covered it with plastic bags so that the moisture that I had mixed in, all the water with the brains, will not evaporate, but it will continue to soak in into the fibers of the hide during the night. Okay, so I just took it out of the shop this morning. I took the plastic bags off 
so that the sun and the wind can start drying it now. And I'm going to loosen off a few parts of it so that I can sew up the holes so that while I'm stretching all the creases that come when you sew up the holes, they will be stretched out throughout the hide and there will not be any bumps. Now then I work the edges around the hide because those are going to dry first and fastest. Then I've just been stretching it. It'll be dried by today and I'm just continually working the fibers and getting those opened up with my little stick here and it is going well. It's the last time I'll brain it as the fibers are starting to loosen up a fair amount and they do want to come apart and that can be pretty dangerous when you're softening if you break through and you make a big hole or rip so that's what I'm careful of and if you brain it too much or if it stays wet for too long the fibers will start to sort of deteriorate and you are going to lose the structure of the hide. Um, it's just about dry now. It's turned a very velvety white all the way through and I'm basically all the way to the corners turning out really nice and soft like you can see finger run across there turning out really nice. So that's basically the whole way around. I'll be continually working it throughout the day until I know for sure it's 100% dry. And then that part is done and I will take it off, sew up all the little holes and then wash the hair side which I'll show you guys and then smoke it and that will be the very last step. Okay, so I finished washing it, brought it back on the lawn here, set it on its um, little things to keep it up. Now I'm going to wait for it to dry. Today I'm going to smoke the bison hide. It's a beautiful day, hardly any wind you can see in the trees. So that'll really work well. I made a teepee here that I'm going to drape the hide over. Then I'm going to start the fire in here. Just start so it gets going fairly good and then I'm going to cover it with some of this punky wood that I collected here. And I'm going to slip this in the middle. From the top I'm going to put it in the middle of the teepee there. And then I'm going to take this tarp and I'm going to wrap it around the very bottom to help keep most of the smoke in. And I'm going to let that burn for a little bit and then I'm going to put pile of some punky wood on there and just let it smoke. So I got the hide draped on underneath the tarp and I put the tarp over top. I'm going to squish it around the edges a little better so it seals the smoke inside. And I have a little opening over here. Going in here. You can see the hide. I'm going to stick the uh, fire underneath here, all the smoke, and it'll ascend and do some good stuff to the hide. Okay, so it is smoking. I'm not sure if you can see the smoke coming off. Before it was so full that you, could bear you couldn't even see that. So that is smoking. Put my hand in there and feel how warm the smoke is. It's okay. I don't want it to get any, more, any warmer. Here's my punk wood that I chopped up. And then I just take this out every five minutes, probably 10, depending how hot the smoke is getting, and I refill it. All right, so my brain tanned smoked buffalo hide is all done. so nice. <laughs> it smells like smoke. Delicious smoke. So good. 
we are actually smoking our cheese and it smells the same way that our cheese does. And that smells really good. <laughs> So, um, where is this hide going? Are you, is it for sale or? Yes, we. So I sold it to a guy in Vancouver, and I'm going to be shipping it out this afternoon. Wow, it's worked really well. And actually, there's been quite a few people that have contacted us since our hides have went up for sale, actually back ordering us. So, that's a uh, pretty exciting. Yeah, awesome. Thank you for following my twin sister Julia and I as we brain tanned our buffalo hides. If you are interested in purchasing a traditionally brain tanned and smoked buffalo hide, you can contact us at thebeaglefamily at gmail.com. Take care and I hope that this encourages you to start tanning your own hides. Ha <laughs> ha